to WBHM Digital Broadcasting, the best in paranormal talk, only on Paranormal Experienced Radio, broadcasting live out of Birmingham, Alabama. And we are back. I'm so sorry to have to stop that conversation on a dime like that because <laughs> I love this stuff. So welcome back, Jane. You were- Thank you, ma'am. And I promise I will finish up this little science <laughs> chat for people who are just so not interested. We can talk about puppies and kittens. Well, but I like this. The, the Fukushima radiation, let's hope it's not an extinction event. There are other things that really could be extinction events. Mm -hmm. There was some question as to whether Hurricane Florence was going to flood nuclear reactors on the East Coast and cause meltdown issues. Thank goodness, apparently that didn't happen. On the Floridian coast, there are multiple, um, multiple nuclear reactors at different facilities. And I'm sitting there watching watching Irma head into Florida going, Oh my God. That, you know, I'm thinking Fukushima, right. As I'm watching this, I'm just like, Oh my God, surely somebody has, you know, brought this level, you know, has been pulling this down or whatever they do in anticipation of such a crisis. And I don't know what the, plans in place are because that's not my business but again we are not great at planning and anticipating things <laughs> like this as in you know the Japanese experience but it's just you should never mess with something that you have no idea how to control if something should go awry well it's interesting you say that because apparently that is the ET extraterrestrial opinion as yes, well. Yes, it is. They showed That's up after I we hear. started detonating nukes, and yep. I think they went tisk tisk. <laughs> I've heard tales that nuclear explosions rend, rip the fabric of the universe. And you know what? My psychic self continuum. says, that's right. Let's stop, shall we? But the deal with the power plants, this is interesting. All these power plants in the face of Hurricane Florence and and any any other hurricane, any responsible nuclear regulatory agency like ours (laughs) will uh, take offline the power plants, take them offline. But the problem is because these plants in the United States on the eastern coast, east coast, are built so low to sea level, like 20 feet, 25 feet above sea level. And own the coast, literally own the coast. That – uh, the problem is even offline, these things are powered by generators that are fueled and they have backup generators on batteries. So if power goes out, the backup generators go on. But if the backup generators are flooded by a surge or flooding after heavy rains and, salt water. and those go out, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you've got a Three Mile Island event or a Fukushima. Well, actually, I want to talk about Fukushima uh, separately. You have a Three Mile Island event where Mm -hmm. the rods, the nuclear rods are no longer being cooled. They heat up and all hell breaks loose. That's a bad thing. What happened in Fukushima is especially interesting historically. This was May, I want to say March or May of 2011. Mm -hmm. I know the day, the year is right. 2011, spring of 2011. The story on Conspiracy Street is that the United States was mad at Japan and used HARP, Mm -hmm. the High Auroral uh, Aeronautic Research Program, or Aerospace Aerial Research Program, HARP, ARP, Weather Control. They used weather control to create this earthquake in Japan off the coast to target their nuclear facilities and succeeded, perhaps, too effectively. It's not clear again that these people in charge of advanced technologies that they keep secret from the rest of us as long as possible. We know HARP is real now. Well, I mean, there is actually took it offline, But I don't believe yeah. that. I don't no, think anybody really believes that it's offline. We're They're using it. it, right? 
they're using it. And they targeted Japan, and now we're paying the price. We, the world, are paying the price, or at least the Northern Hemisphere are paying the price of that. If we continue mucking about with nuclear energy, bad things will happen. I think it, uh, any reasonable person would understand that. Proponents of nuclear energy say that the gains outweigh the risks, but I'm with the aliens on this one. Yep, Let's get to the anti-grav energy and the so-called zero point or free energy, which I understand means devices that output more energy than they than is input into them. Yes. So if you feed in 10 volts and you get out 20 volts, uh, this is a gain, an energy gain. But most systems, on, well, every system known on Earth is a, a lossy system. It, it loses energy. So the aliens have apparently figured out how to create positive energy gains which is how they are so powerful. Physically, they're puny, evidently. They don't do well in a fist fight, as I guess Travis Walton found out <laughs> when well, he pushed one back, right? They certainly, they certainly left the room. So, yeah, and he's, I got to imagine, he was probably a strapping young man at that oh, point. Oh, yes. because, because of his, his living. Well, the other part of this story that bears mentioning, I think, is that the other six loggers split the scene. Mm -hmm. They got to the main road, and their their crew boss, who was a few years older than the rest of them, and perhaps ex-military, I don't know, but in any event, maybe it was a Boy Scout. He said, we can't leave a fallen comrade. We have to go back. Right. And they went back. Because nobody wanted to wait on a lonely road in the middle of nowhere, Arizona, with a UFO flying around, at least one UFO flying around. They all went back together. They couldn't find Travis nope. or, or any evidence that anything had happened. Uh, there were daylight searches in the days following and five with no results, no positive results, no shredded clothing, no imprints on the ground from landing pads or anything like that, landing apparatus, nothing. There were some... Geiger counter readings mm -hmm. and some magnetic readings, but probably quasi con conclusive, quasi right. or semi conclusive, you know, jury's out on that. But while he was gone for five days, all of those six guys left behind were facing murder charges yep. because they were the last people to have seen Travis alive and they reported his absence. So what else is the sheriff's department supposed to think? Well, obviously not what they said, which was there was a spacecraft in the woods and he was too curious and went to check it out and got struck by the wash. But because the CIA propaganda machine had been going now travis was in 1975 if memory serves yes. and by then uh, the propaganda was well underway and you have to be the sheriffs and everybody investigating the case really believed you have to be crazy to believe in ufos they gave them lie detector tests psychological profiles all the stuff and by the way, all these guys passed lie detector tests, mm -hmm. but anybody who understands lie detector tests, polygraphs, knows they can be faked. They yes, can be they faked. Can. So, you know, as a skeptic, a true skeptic, I don't you – know, I believe UFOs exist because my government believes they exist. And I know my government believes they exist because there's documents where they talk about them very plainly, okay, and have pictures and reports. So there's no question in my mind that they exist. The question is, did Hoozy Poozy actually see one? Did Travis Walton see one? I, I, I tend to think he did. And when you do, it changes your life forever. That's another thing. It changed Paul Hellyer's life forever, the yes. former Minister of Defense in Canada. Changed his life forever. He's into disclosure now. He speaks publicly because it changed his life. When you really understand these things are real, it changes your insides it's what's called a visceral reaction. 
your guts wrench. Yes. That's re- really what, what it means. Your guts wrenched, gut wrenching experience. It changes your head. It changes everything you believe. Everything you know is wrong. And most people just aren't ready to face that emotionally, mentally. And furthermore, has nothing to do with their daily life. They have to get up in the morning and go to work. You're right. Bottom line, bottom line, right? So don't mess with that. <laughs> don't upset the apple cart with Get too much overthinking, yeah. right? <laughs> but you know, we've got we've got 3 minutes left and we've got about another 3 hours of show to go. So <laughs> I can't believe how fast the time goes. I know. And it's just we're I love un- talking with you, Cat. You are such an excellent host. Oh my, thank you. I like talking with you too. But I just do want to squeeze in one more time. Please. Encouragement to all listeners. Please check out my new ebook, Unknown Objects. Yes. It's on Amazon as an as a Kindle ebook. I hope to have it in paperback within a couple of weeks before Halloween. If you have Kindle Unlimited, it's a free download. And by the way, while you're at it, go ahead and crack the first page because it triggers something on Amazon and I get good stuff, which I don't there even know go. what it is yet. But there you go. <laughs> Shameless self promotion. Unknown objects available now on Amazon as an ebook. And I'm going to tell y'all that you need to read this book. If you're not familiar with the the case files through American history, it will educate you. And she has done a good job. You have done a good job. I absolutely would recommend this book to anybody. Thank you so much, Kat. That means a lot to me. I value your opinion. Thank you. You You've talked to so many people. You have talked to so many people. George Nori, we need to talk about that another day. (laughs) We do, because it did not go as well as I would have liked it to. But when I saw him at contact, he was also at contact, and he is such a gracious professional, consummate professional. And... He made everything better. So, oh, well, but, he's a gentleman and a scholar, I suspect. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. But that being said, you know, I am so appreciative of you being here. I I love this book. I enjoy you so much. I'm very excited for where you're going next with this because you know what? Reading the presentation in the book makes me just realize how valued a speaker you're going to be on this topic. I can't wait to, as I did with John D'Souza, get to see you lecture. I'm excited about that, too. I think it's going to be amazing. People are going to be knocking your door down, woman. And Kat Hobson made the acknowledgments in my book. She is so awesome. Oh, I appreciated that so much. You are so awesome. Thank you. And your listeners are awesome. They are. We all rock. We all (laughs) rock so hard. We do. We're a very special kind of people, right? We are. We are singular. We are. (laughs) And that being said, guys, we are going to have to run. Um, Thank you for listening. As always, I personally appreciate y'all so much. Everyone who listens to this. You're the reason I do this. And be sure and join us Friday for Ghost Talk Radio with 187 PI. And goodness only knows what Shelly has going on. Check her page out. And then Sunday, I will be back on Fate Magazine Radio. And that's going to be fun. Then you'll have Denise back. 